If you're looking for overnight success without challenge, it will be your hell on earth. If you're willing to play the long game, it'll be the best decision you could ever make. Really, when we hear about this entrepreneurial grind of 80 hours a week, it's an ineffective use of time. It's not knowing how to focus on leverage activities that actually get a result. But how did you take it once you went full time to this whole new level? The biggest piece of advice I would give to everybody that wants to take their business to the next level is Today, I have Kelly Roach on, who was a former NFL cheerleader. Now she runs an eight-figure-a-year consulting business, helping entrepreneurs like myself, as well as anybody else who wants to build a company, a personal brand, and uh, they're specializing in the digital space. So I'm excited to pick her brain today. What's up, Kelly? I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about you know how you went from cheerleader to where you are today. That's pretty yeah. fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was an NFL cheerleader and it was one of my like eight jobs that I had in college, right? So I was hustling my way through, trying to pay my bills, um, went to the school where I was going to be in the least amount of student debt because we didn't have a lot of money growing up. So, you know, being an NFL cheerleader happened because basically I went to a school. I had been a competitive dancer, competitive cheerleader um, all coming up and went to a school that had like a D3 team. Like I went to check out the cheerleading team. I went to check out the dance team and I was like, oh man, okay, this isn't going to go. So I'm like, either it's a big step back or it's a big leap forward. And I'm like, I'm going for it. So I auditioned for the Eagles my freshman year. And um, then when I graduated, you know, I just knew that I wanted to get in on the ground floor of something where if I hustled and I worked hard and I learned as much as I possibly could, that there would be opportunity. Right. So I joined a fortune 500, took the most entry level sales job, they had available and first one in, last one out for basically a decade and was promoted seven times in eight years. Learned a ton, yeah. right? Um, went from running, being a solo producer as a salesperson to running 17 locations. And we broke every record in the company's history for profitable growth to the point that they started flying CEOs in from the other countries to come like study what we were doing, right? Yeah. So, you know, I think it's really important and I, I shared with you, kind of pre-show, value every experience in life. Yeah. Well, one thing we were talking about pre-show was, you know, a lot of people give corporate a bad look, especially yeah. in the entrepreneur space. And I know a lot of my audience is mainly entrepreneurs or people who are trying to get out of the corporate yes. world. And, you know, I, I get the time freedom aspect and I've never had a corporate job, so I can't even speak on sure. it. But you mentioned you were like, hey, I loved my corporate experience because it gave me all the skills I have today. Oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. And and I'll take it even broader than that for everyone listening. I want to challenge you to think about whatever your situation is in life right now. In work, out of work, working for an entrepreneurial company, working for a corporation. I guarantee you're there for a reason. I guarantee you are meant to learn a specific lesson there that is going to help you with wherever you're going next. The problem is, Ryan, is everyone's obsessed with where they're going and they don't appreciate where they already are. And sometimes you're in a place where, yes, that is a stepping stone for your future. And you're like, no, this isn't my destination. But I think a lot of times when people are there, um, they don't appreciate making the most of that opportunity. Right. And what I did when I was with the NFL was I made the most of every opportunity. That's how I learned to get on camera. That's right. how I learned to do photo shoots. That's how I learned to speak in public. And people are always like, oh, you shake pom-poms on the field. I'm like, no, yeah, actually, a it's a lot more than that, right? Because I maximize that opportunity. Same thing with corporate. I mean, I, I, that was like the school of hard knocks for business. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I would not be anywhere in my entrepreneurial business if I had not gone through that experience of learning what I did there. Yeah, I'm 100% with you. I think no matter what situation you're in, you have to be able to take lessons from that. Yes. You know, I tell people all the time, um, my entrepreneurial journey started with me flipping couches and like grinding, just selling Love. anything and everything I could to make money. And they're like, do you think that you should have gotten a real estate sooner and figured it out? I'm like, well, let me tell you, flipping all those couches and going and running around town taught me sales skills. Because I just buying and selling, negotiating all yeah. the time. It taught me the market of Las Vegas because I drove around the city For and sure. delivering and picking up. Um, and then even in my baseball career, um, I was in the minor leagues. Yeah. And I was making 1200 bucks a month. Yeah. And I know being a cheerleader pays like yeah. 100 bucks a week <laughs> or something crazy. I've yeah. seen it before. Yeah. Yeah. And so you learn like how to live on nothing yep. while pursuing, you know, a passion. Sure. You weren't being an NFL cheerleader for the money. Right, exactly. And so I just think 
Every part of your life has a lesson, like you yeah. mentioned. You just have to find it. That's it. So yeah. tell me about the corporate side. You were in sales starting out, which to yes. me is like the number one skill you it's need to learn. It's the number one skill. It's the number one skill that everyone needs to learn. Listen, you want your kids to behave, right? You want your spouse to go along with the vacation that <laughs> you want to choose, right? You could literally look at, you want to get promoted in your job. You want to close the client in your business. Everything we do is sales. I lead a company. I have, I have a big team now of 40 people. What am I? I'm a salesperson. That's all I'm doing is trying to inspire my team to believe in this vision and this dream, right? So I, I agree with you. I think sales is like the number one skill. And, and I think the number two one is leadership. Mm. And they kind of go hand in hand. And they go hand in hand. Yep. Yeah. A leader is selling, you know, their company or yeah. their people on, hey, buy in. Yeah, absolutely. So- yeah. With the sales, you said you got promoted um, seven times. And what was that like? Were you getting promoted to a new sales position or sales manager? Or did you like transition to the operational side? How did that work? Yeah, it was actually really interesting. So I came in, I, I'm like hustling and grinding. I'm the first one in, I'm the last one out. I'm like 21 years old. I show up full blowout, full suit every single day. All my colleagues are like, you make $30,000 a year. Like what the <laughs> f are you doing? And I'm like, no, you don't understand. I'm like, I'm getting ready for where I'm going. I'm not showing up for this job that I'm in. I'm getting ready for where I'm going. So I started off doing sales and, you know, my boss came to me one day and he said, you know, he, and, and I'm killing it right in sales. I did not want to leave sales because I was having fun. I was making a ton of money. He comes to me and he's like, I need you to take over this branch. It's like the worst branch. It's like one of the worst performing branches in the country. And he's like, I need you to take over this branch. I'm like, why? I don't want to. I'm not interested. Nothing about that excites me. And and I knew like with the little tiny raise that you get, because it's corporate, right? You don't get big raises when you make moves. I knew it was going to end up being less money, right? Because you work more hours, whatever. Right. And he sat me down and he said, Kelly, he said, you could be the best salesperson in the world. But he said, if you do not learn how to get results through others as a leader, your success is always going to be limited. And he's like, you're never going to get to where you really want to be if you don't understand how to get results through others. And, and, you know, that conversation really stuck with me. And so as I moved up the corporate ladder, what I was doing was they would give me the worst branches and they would be yeah. like, fix this, fix this. Like, you know, all the disgruntled staff, all like horrible year over year numbers, like they're losing money. Right. And so I stayed in sales. It's just now I was managing PNLs and I was managing the staff and I was building the teams and it was just take on one branch and then another and another. And eventually it was 17 locations that I was running. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So having all that success, why, why quit? Why, why did it end? Yeah. So I actually went to the company and I said, Hey, listen, I'm making you guys like a gajillion dollars. <laughs> and I really like, it was ridiculous. And I said, and, and the money that I'm making here doesn't equate to what I'm doing. And I said, I like you guys a lot. You like me. I've been here for a long time. I said, but I'm starting my own business. And I said, you can fire me right now on the spot or you can trust that I'm still going to be like your top performing person. So I actually, and they didn't fire me. I was actually really surprised, um, but they they kept me on and they allowed me to build my business and they knew, and I'm very much in the public sphere and I was from day one, right? Um, so I went to them and I, you know, I let them know what I was doing because I'm, I'm about transparency and integrity and I wanted to be upfront, like this is what I'm going to do. So I started my business on the side. And then I built it up to where it was almost making a million dollars a year and then, you know, transitioned full time into the business. Not, but, not a bad side hustle. Yeah, not <laughs> a bad side hustle. But yeah, I mean, I was literally in my car. I would do my sales calls on my lunch break in my car. I would work from five to seven in the morning and seven till nine at night. And, um, you know, it, it was all worth it. It was, yeah. it was all worth it. And it was, it was such a lesson. I hear so many entrepreneurs that work 80 hours a week to make almost nothing in their business. And I never had the luxury to do that, you know, cause I was running this business on my 20 minute lunch break and like an hour before work or whatever. So I, I think, I think that was a great learning experience. Like I said, I, th I think it's all about learnings, right? Good and bad, our failures and our successes. It's about identifying what am I meant to get out of that experience, right? Right, yeah. right. So with that, you know, what did the business look like while you were building it to the seven-figure level as a yeah. side hustle, essentially? Yes. Like, 
you were just saying, hey, I want to consult, like what? What was yeah, the business model? I, so I started off doing one-to-one consulting on people's sales systems because what I discovered was that most people that get into the entrepreneurial market and even companies have a horrendous sales system or no sales system at all, right? Right, or no sale, like I was <clears throat> mind blown. I started working with actual like companies, like legitimate corporations. And I'd be like, hey, you know, walk me through the sales system. And it was kind of like, um, well, you know, so, so I started helping people put sales systems in place. I started off just doing one-to-one consulting and I started working with, um, clients around the world where I could actually do my coaching calls at night. So I started off doing coaching calls at like seven o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night for people all around the globe. And I started off one-to-one. Then I moved into group. Then I moved into multiple offers, masterminds, you know, the whole thing. And, uh, just kind of went from there. Right. So you scale it, it's going crazy. And then uh, eventually it's obviously become too big for you to have both. Yeah. And you say, hey, I'm out. Let's pause real quick. We just launched something new that I'm really excited about, which is our text hotline. It is now easier than ever to get in touch with myself and my team. If you've ever been thinking about working with us in any way, whether it's through real estate investing, learning how to create content or scaling your business, We want to help you out. And it's super simple. All you got to do is just text 725-444-5244. If you text that number, my team is going to get in touch with you right away. And I, in fact, might be responding to some of those texts as we get the system just built out and rolling. We can answer any of your questions for getting you help, telling you about our different programs, different events we've got coming up, different resources that we have that can help you. It's going to be epic. So, Just text us at 725-444-5244 and somebody will respond to you and get you help right now. So what's it been like since then? Being like, uh, you know, a true, I don't want to say a true entrepreneur, but now full-time, you know, the corporate safety net is gone, you know, you're on your own, feast or famine. No, I mean, I think entrepreneurship is like the greatest gift I am so unbelievably thankful. I I mentioned this a little bit pre-show, but, you know, me and my husband, we have a daughter and my family is like my everything. It's my first priority. Like I, every decision I make in my life is for family. And I think the gift of entrepreneurship is the gift of being able to put my family first and being able to make the right decisions for my family for the right reasons. And it's one of the reasons why I didn't leave corporate right away because I was the breadwinner. I wanted to make sure I had like a plan, you know, and I wanted to make sure that every decision I was making, I was able to put my family first. And so um, I would say for anyone listening to the show that if you're willing to play the long game in entrepreneurship, it'll be the best decision you could ever make. It'll be the greatest gift in your life. If you're looking for overnight success without challenge, it will be your hell on earth. <laughs> and, and that, but that's really the truth. Right? Yeah. Well, but it's, Instagram tells you, you know, it's easy. Bane of my existence. Yeah. It, it's, it's tough out there. And, and I was telling you about the book that, that I'm writing about conviction marketing. And it's, it's really, I feel, I, I have a heart for people that are coming into this world of entrepreneurship or even coming up, you know, people that are coming up right now, because all signs, everything that you see on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, everything around you is telling you that you can make millions overnight. You will make millions overnight. Like you should have a gazillion followers, you know, yeah. year and a bit. Like all signs are kind of telling you this misinformation of like what your expectation of yourself should be. And I feel like that takes a lot of entrepreneurs out of the game. I think it causes a lot of anxiety and depression because it's it's this perception of what it takes to ach- achieve success that has no bearing on reality, like no bearing on reality. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, look, the reality is most people are watching content from, you know, people like me, whatever, that have all this success and they compare themselves to that. And it's like, dude, 99% of people, (laughs) they're the reality. Yeah. You know, you're seeing the outliers. Yeah. Yeah. And so it is something I've thought about and struggled with is like, man, you know, how do I try and showcase maybe more reality of like what it's like, not only at just my level and the struggles I go through, but 
what a normal person should really expect. Yes. Yes. I love that. I, I actually started about two years ago. I started talking really openly in my, cause I do a ton of content. I'm like you, I'm yeah. out there, right? I love creating content. I love teaching. Like I'm, I'm out there all the time, but I started about two years ago. I became very conscious of this issue and I started trying to like openly talk about like what it really takes, you know, how did we get here and what's it going to take for you to get there, you know, and I think that's something that we can all collectively do because I think so many more entrepreneurs will have success at higher levels. We open the door, we swing open the door for people when we have an open dialogue about that, that you know, you not having success two years in is completely normal and it takes time and all of that. Um, I think when people are mentally prepared for entrepreneurship, they're going to have a much higher level of success. Yeah. No. And I think the mental preparation is like, look, for one, nothing is guaranteed. Yeah. You got to understand you're taking for risk. Sure. You're betting on yourself. And, you know, but in the end, I tell people this too, like your current job ain't guaranteed. No. <laughs> like I would rather bet on me, you know, than I would uh, somebody else controlling me. A hundred percent. But, 100%. So tell me this. I mean, you didn't start this business that long ago. Right. And to where you've grown it today yeah. to be in this eight-figure business, how do you go from, you know, you told me about the transition. Yeah. Like you had to put in the work during your lunch breaks. Yeah. You're making calls. Yeah. That's what people who are trying to get an entrepreneurship are going to have to do. But how did you take it once you went full-time to this whole new level? Yeah. Well, a lot of things. Um, I would say, number one, I'm a big believer in the power of team, right? So I built a winning team, right? I have Carla here with me today. I built a winning team, and and I've always been a big believer of, you know, alone we can do so little, to, together we can do so much, right? I, I've had a team from day one, and you can duplicate and multiply and scale. It was that conversation I had with my boss, you know, almost 20 years ago now where he said, like, the power of, of getting results through others. So team, um, tenacity right? I'm just tenacious. Like I'm not going to stop. I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I think the, the biggest piece of advice I would give to everybody that wants to take their business to the next level is do what you're being called to do, not waiting for the claps. I think the biggest thing is people's behavior is altered by whether or not they get as many likes as they were looking for, as much uh, engagement or, or the, the comments that they want. It's, it's knowing your purpose. It's being willing to show up on the good days and on the bad days. It's like being consistent with what you're doing. It's its no matter what. I mean, the fact that we have this opportunity, and I don't know what it was like for you when you first started in business. When I first started in business, there was no social media. You know, we were still using, you know, a fax machine and email was pretty new, right? And I was going door to door, right? We actually went business to business and that's how we did sales. And then we would try to get an appointment. So to me, when I look at us as business owners today, and we have free access to billions, billions of people on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you know, LinkedIn, that, that it's just this open forum of abundance everywhere. If we can't figure out how to direct our energy to make connections with other human beings, to inspire them to say, yeah, I, I, Ryan, I really think you can help me get the, the house of my dreams or the building that I want to buy or, you know, whatever it is, we're kind of missing what's right in front of us. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. 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 I've been a big proponent of, you know, making content and people building personal brands. It's like, you know, I tell our realtors this all the time. We have over 150 realtors at the brokerage. And I'm like, guys, you know, the old school way was to cold call and go door knock and hold open houses. Why? Right. At this point, you right. guys can go talk to everyone. Exactly. If you can just make good content, if you can figure out the ways to digitally be known, like doing the old school ways is, is dumb. The efficiencies of scale leveraging social media are mind-blowing. And I think the problem is, is that a lot of people entering the entrepreneurial world today, they're coming right in with social media. So they can't even draw the distinction of like what you just said. Like you just said, like, this is the old school. This is the new school. The efficiencies of scale are unbelievable leveraging social. But a lot of people, they, they're coming right into social. So it's almost like they can't see what's like right in front of them. Right. Like, you know what I mean? They're like, this is just what I use for fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I, I love that you're helping realtors do that. I mean, it's there's an amazing shift happening with with real estate now, where people are buying homes sight unseen, right? Like literally, you can do your entire gig virtually now. Like 
that's amazing. Yeah. Right. And it's going to continue to grow that way. You know, as we get into this augmented reality space and everything else, it's like, dude, you don't have to drive people around anymore. You're going to be able to go walk it from your bedroom. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. The world's changing quick. Yeah. So, you know, I want to talk about like what you do at your consulting, who you're, who you're talking to, what is, what it is you're like taking them through the process. And, uh, Maybe I'll get some live consulting here on my own business and how, like what you would do. Wealth Builders, I'm so excited to announce the launch of Wealthy University. This is literally the best deal we've ever created. Imagine if you got calls with me and my team every single week where you can ask Q&A and get up-to-date information on what's working in my business and for other experts in the world. On top of that, what if you got access to all of our courses? And what if you got access to exclusive softwares like our CRMs in our community to go and do deals and make relationships? Well, if that sounds like something you wanna be a part of, it's only $97 a month. I'm not kidding you. If you've joined any of our other programs, you know They're a lot more expensive than that. So to get access to our community for only $97 a month is absolutely insane, and it's so easy to sign up. All you gotta do is go to wealthyuniversity.com, and you could sign up today and get instant access to those calls, exclusive content like our WealthCon recordings or our workshop recordings, and so many other things in the community. So go check out Wealthy University today and get signed up. I I wanna be a client for you. Tell me, like, what's the first thing we're doing? Yeah. So I think the first thing is to assess what, where you are, where you want to be. Obviously, you have to get a baseline, right? And you have to understand what the person is doing to get there. Right. Sounds really simple. What's so interesting about business owners is when I say, you know, okay, you know, no, you're probably a little, you're not maybe the average entrepreneur, but most yeah. of the time when you look at the average entrepreneur, their time is being spent on things that are not actually going to move the needle for them. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when I say, Ryan, tell me where you are, tell me where you want to be and tell me what you're doing to get there. Most of the times for the average entrepreneur, the what they're doing to get there is in complete misalignment with what they need to be doing mm. to get there. Meaning the vast majority of entrepreneurs, if I said, tell me how many hours a week you're spending connecting with prospects. Uh, me personally. Uh, I just make content all day. So, right. but I'm saying, I'm saying, not <laughs> yeah. you. I'm yeah. saying in general, uh, we're we're talking about business because you you've reached a level where you can do that, right? Right. And right. and you know, people will get to that level. I don't do sales calls either, but I did in the beginning stages right, of my business. Right. I did, um, and now I have a sales team that does that, right? But for a lot of businesses that are trying to break into the online space. They're spending their days doing tactical things. They're working on their website. They're working on connecting their, you know, link to their course or whatever. They're doing admin. They're doing scheduling. They're doing operations. None of these things make them money. Right. None. Right. Right. So a couple of the things that we do is, number one, we help them understand what what the profit-producing activities are in their business that are going to move the needle right away. Right. What do you need to be doing that is going to actually get more customers coming in the door? Number one. Number two, content strategy. Right. So for us, we do teach online entrepreneurs. We teach service-based entrepreneurs. So getting a strategy for where you're showing up online, when you're showing up, what is your content strategy, how much, how often, where is it happening, what's the call to action. So just... Top of the funnel, discoverability, right? Discoverability. Right. So engineering your celebrity, going on podcasts, you know, some some do TV appearances, some don't, you know, all of that. But it, it's really, we, we overcomplicate it so much mm-hmm. when it's very, very simple. It's like, do more of the things that are going to move the needle mm-hmm. to get you from where you are to where you want to be. The value of having a coach is, number one, helping hold up a mirror to understand, okay, what I'm doing right now is not, in fact, going to get me to where I want to be. Number two, this is what I need to be doing instead. And number three, this is how to do it. And we teach the how to do it, whether whether it's, you know, effective content, podcasting. We teach the live launch method, which is how service-based entrepreneurs can close clients like 100 at a time Mm -hmm. using live streaming. Yep. Using live streaming. So what, how, (laughs) you know, alignment, alignment is, is, you know, such a simple thing, but such a powerful one. Right. 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 Yeah. So I, I love all of that because they're the same techniques. I've kind of just had to figure out on my own, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, Hey, I think it's probably smart to, you know, post and (laughs) like make content around what services I have. Right. (laughs) 
I think it's smart to create funnels and different automations to yeah. capture all the traffic. Yeah. And then I think it's smart to obviously have great products and deliver yeah. on all that traffic you get. Yeah. Um, but then I look back, like now we have it, and I'm still trying to always think of new For ways sure. to- We're the same way. Yeah, it's just a make it better. It's a invention to improve, yeah. But then I think about, man, all the stuff I've created to this point, holy cow, like it took me years to figure it out like other people. And I feel like I did it pretty fast. Yeah. You know, and it's just yeah. like, man, if you have somebody who can just tell you how to do it right away, yeah, man, it makes it so much easier. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've seen people and, and I'm a big proponent and I, I like to be very careful in, in what I say and how I say it because I don't want to misrepresent the entrepreneurial journey, right? Because it's long and it's hard. Right. I'll say that again. It's long and it's hard. But we have had people come into our programs that have done an extra seven figures in a single year with us because it's just getting clarity. Like they have the tenacity. They have the work ethic. They have like some of the right stuff. It's just putting the right things in the right order in the right way. Mm -hmm. And and you can do it. And and you're right. I mean, I had someone that came to us that said she was set, she was in business for 17 years. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, she joined our program. And she's like, this is the first year I'm having fun and making money in my business. 17 <laughs> years in. Yeah. Right. If we could get people to do that in year one, it would be amazing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think uh, part of the things that I teach our students for um, at Future Flipper with real estate business is like, you have to understand your personality, right? You know, so many people are in the wrong seats and they're like, you know, they're trying to do sales, but they're just not going to be a salesperson. Right. It's like, yo, you should just be doing operations then. Yeah. And all the integrator things, not not sales, not the visionary, like not everyone is meant to be the face of the company. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just figuring out too what it is you really like to do and what you're good at. And building a winning team, yep. right? Because, and I say this to people all the time, look at all the tech companies. Like the the people that create the tech company that engineer the vision and the solution, you know, I, I can pretty much guarantee that they're not strong salespeople, right? Right. But they have to get a team in place that's going to engineer the sales to happen. I think a lot of entrepreneurs maybe recognize that they're not a strong salesperson or maybe they're not meant to be that person in the business, but then they don't go get someone to be that person in the business. Yeah, you right? need the person. You need the it person. It just doesn't have to be you. Right, it just doesn't have to be you, but there needs mm. to be a person, right? So I think just that point of clarity, you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. So I'm curious from like your business perspective now, like, how did you grow your consulting to be so big? Like, where are you getting all your prospects from? Yeah, social media. Just all social media. It's podcast. So podcasting, yep. right? So I'm consistent as hell. I mean, I'm I'm I think I'm almost at 800 episodes now. Right? <laughs> oh, geez. I mean, like I I take my show really seriously, and we went from. We went from being, so we're in the marketing category right. and we went from being so far down on the list that like, you know how you can't scroll after a while <laughs> and they can't even find you. So we were down there, right? And now we, we flirt with number eight. We, we go between like number eight and number 13 mm. and consistency, consistency, consistency. It's playing the long game. 800 episodes. 800 episodes, right? So podcasting and not just podcasting on your own show, but podcasting on other people's. Right. People ask me all the time. They're like, you know, how do I pick shows to go on? I still go on small niche shows. People will say, you know, do you require this many followers? I'm like, no, like get out there, have meaningful conversations, get visible. So podcast guesting, growing your own podcast, uh, creating content like we talked about and yeah. a live launch. Yeah. yeah. I think live, live streams are so good, especially for selling. Like I don't do a ton of them because- I just am lazy, I think, on that front because I, I'm more about evergreen content. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I'm just like, dude, I'd rather people just, they find me, they come to me. I don't want to like be constantly selling sure. people on sure, live. Sure. But I will say, anytime I do go live, there are always sales, there's always moves. Yeah. And, you know, if I got an event coming, I'll do lives to yeah. promote the event. But um, I love all that. I'm curious uh, to hear your thoughts. I'm, I'm big on social media. What, what's your favorite platform? I don't have a favorite. So here, I'll tell you a secret. This is kind of bad. I probably shouldn't even say this, but like <laughs> I don't spend really any time on social media. Mm -hmm. um, I create the content. I'm the I same way. To my I don't consume. Yeah, I don't consume. Like people will ask me all the time, like favorite podcast, favorite, you know, favorite show. Da, yeah. da, da. I'm like, well, I'm I don't. I'm saying more so for yeah. your clients. Yeah, what do you for, recommend? Um, For my clients. Well, I think that's shifting, right? So up until this year, 
our best performing platform was absolutely Facebook. And as Facebook went through a lot of changes, like we built massive groups on Facebook and that's where we got like a ton uh. of our clients from. But as things are changing with that, we've actually moved a lot of our streaming to Zoom where we'll be able to pull people from Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. They'll come from all different places and we'll just bring them to Zoom instead. Mm, so you'll do the live stream on Zoom yeah. instead of, you know, yeah. IG live or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. so you're just hosting a bunch of webinars and trainings and yeah. getting people on. I mean, I do, I don't do as much live streaming as I used to. I used to do a lot more. Yeah. Like a lot like what's more. A lot? Like, like I would be live every week or multiple times a week like okay. in the past. But as the company has grown and the demands of actually running the company have become so much more, yeah. um, it, it's, it's harder to balance that. Um, you know, now we might launch five times a year and I'll be live a couple times during the launch. And then other people on my team yeah. will also be live during the launch. So I'm not doing it by myself. Yeah. If you haven't heard, WealthCon is coming back to Las Vegas April 18th to the 20th. And I believe it's going to be our biggest one yet. We're going to try and fill the Caesars Palace with 2,000 top level real estate investors and entrepreneurs. I've got amazing speakers like Neil Patel, Tim Grover, Dan Martell, Pace Morby, and many others coming. And it's going to be great. So if you want to get tickets today. We got some special deals going on. All you got to do is text me at 725-444-5244. We'll get you info on what kind of tickets we got all the way from general admission to our diamond level tickets where you're able to network with the speakers, go backstage, ask them questions, and then have a dinner with all of us in a really intimate setting. It's going to be great. So if you want to get tickets, text me at 725-444- Five, two, four, four. Yeah. So what's uh, your day-to-day -day look like now as, you know, a, a CEO, you know, yes. level person? You're not the sales calls anymore. You're not yeah. the person launching. I mean, y you make podcasts and content, but what else do you yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. Um, my life has changed a lot, actually, like in the last year, year and a half. I, for a really long time, I was that person that was up working at 5 a.m. every day until, you know, nine o'clock at night. And I kind of hit my point where I'm like, mm, you know what? I'm <laughs> done with that. I'm not doing that Why? anymore. <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore. Um, so now I get up in the morning, uh, Billy and I get Madison breakfast. We get her out the door. I typically, you know, from like eight to eight 30, get some work done. Billy gets back from dropping her off for school. We go for like an hour, hour and a half walk together almost every day. Yeah. Um, and then I come back and then I'm usually on either calls or zooms or PR from like, now like 1130 to like four. Okay. And I try to, I try to be like off the phone and off of meetings by the time Madison gets home. Um, so I do a lot with audio messaging, yeah, you know, I love just it. quick, easy I send voice texts all that's, the time. Yeah. And that's what I do as well. And that that's been just amazing from an efficiency standpoint and to be able to touch a lot of people with a lot of things, but I'm, I'm definitely at a stage of life now where like, I'm not waking up early. I'm not staying up late. Like that game is over for me. I did that, <laughs> you know, for a really long time. I did it with corporate. I did it in the first 10 years of my business. I'm kind of in like a different stage of life now. I yeah. love it. I yeah. love it. That's one of my goals is um, for entrepreneurs to not live that lifestyle. Exactly. Because I don't even think you have to do it from the beginning. I yeah. think there's ways to really be efficient with your time and your mm -hmm. schedule and still have a ton of success without really ever going through that 80 hour a week grind. Yeah. And I, I agree with that. I mean, for me, because I stayed in my corporate job and I was yeah. full on there and I was working my business outside of that. But like I said, I feel like that was like the biggest blessing because I never worked 80 hours a week in my own business. I don't even know if I ever worked more than 50 hours a week in my own business. I didn't have the luxury of building that way. I had to learn what to focus on that was going to be efficient and effective mm -hmm. and channel my time there. And I think Really, when we hear about this entrepreneurial grind of 80 hours a week, really what that is, is it's it's an ineffective use of time. I say that all the time. You're not getting anything more done. When you're exhausted, you're certainly not getting anything more done. Yep. It's, it's not knowing how to focus on leverage activities that actually get a result. Yeah. Right? It's, uh, for those you don't know, it's there's something called Parkinson's Law which basically states, if you give yourself a certain amount of time, that's how much time yeah. you will take. You know, if you say, oh, I got 10 hours today to go finish yeah. all these tasks, you'll take 10 hours. Yeah. But if you say, I got five hours, you'll find a way to get it done in five. Yeah. And for me, that's just something I've always done is like, all right, I don't 
have 10 hours to do this. I got, yes. you know, stuff I want to enjoy in my life. Yeah. So I've got six hours to do this. Yeah. And people are like, you're so busy, but it looks like, you know, you're doing, you're still having fun and doing all the stuff. I'm yeah. like, well, yeah, I forced myself like to get a lot of stuff done in a very short yeah. amount of time. So if you ever come to me in the office, yes, I'm yeah. extremely busy because yeah. I do not waste time. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. So yeah. tell me a little bit about the dynamic at home. I mean, you talked about, um, you know, you've got Madison and yeah. your priority is to drop her off and then make yeah. sure you're there to pick her up and come home. Um, and your husband, he, you were telling me pre-show, he's um, a stay-at-home dad yeah. now. Yeah. And how's that dynamic? It's It has been the best decision. I always say best decision mm -hmm. I ever made was marrying Billy. Second best decision <laughs> I ever made was retiring Billy. Um, because it just, our household is is peaceful. Like yeah. I I don't think it was ever meant to be that both people and I and I and I'm not saying this. I don't want to act like I'm saying this from a pedestal because I understand everyone's in a different situation. But I do believe having both parents have stressful careers, it, it's really hard on home life. It's mm -hmm. really hard on family life. Billy and I actually decided before we were even engaged that when we had a family that one of us was going to be home. At the time, we didn't know who it was going to be. Right. We just agreed one of us will be home because that's the life that we wanted. It just so happened that I was in my corporate career. He was in his corporate career. My business started taking off, and we both knew, like, <laughs> this is it. Like, yeah. this is the thing that's going to, like, take care of our family long term. Um, but it's it's been incredible, and I'm so, so thankful to get to have – our life and to yeah. have the freedom. You don't realize how much freedom comes with having your spouse at home. I know you have yeah. a similar situation as well, but it's, it's amazing. Yeah. You know? I, it's funny. Cause my wife, um, she was a teacher for three years doing, mm -hmm. um, eighth grade English. And, you know, once we had kids, you know, that was when she retired and yeah. became a stay at home mom. And now, you know, we have two kids and you know, who knows however many we'll end up having, yeah. but now I'm like, how do people work? Like she is so busy with everything she's oh doing gosh. all the time. I'm like, how do people do it? Like it no. amazes me that, uh, you know, uh, two people work or even, you know, and I feel it makes me feel really appreciative of like the single parents that work and still I find know. a way to raise their kids. Like that's amazing. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. I, I, I don't know how people do it. And it's, you know, I, all hail to the people that do because it really is. And and then like, I feel like every week at school, there's either like a half day or there's <laughs> the day that you come in at 11 or it's the teacher in service day or it's a holiday. And you're like, when are these kids ever at school? <laughs> like, yeah. What's their <laughs> real schedule? <laughs> right. It's great. Yeah. Can I be on their schedule? Cause that is like amazing. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a life changer for sure. And that's why I'm so passionate about the work that I do. I have had so many clients in the last couple of years retire their spouse. And I've brought that to the conversation with my clients for, for as long as I can remember. And I, I feel like I've almost planted that seed of like, this is possible. Like you can, can do this. Like your family can travel anywhere, can do anything, can have this freedom. And that's why I love what I do. It's not about like the dollars. I help people achieve six figures. I help them achieve seven figures. I had my first two clients achieve eight figures this year, which like I'm talking about small online businesses, right? Not talking about corporations. Right. That's a big deal for businesses that are just getting started in the online space, right? But I, I think if you can do something where you're empowering families to be able to like carve their own path that way and like, how lucky am I that this is the work that I get to do? Right. You know? Super rewarding. Yeah. And yeah, I think it just comes down to at the end, like uh, when it comes to your spouse, it is a partnership and it's a team. You know, I, I have people, I actually just did a YouTube video that the title, it was a little clickbaity, but it was, my wife has made me millions. And people mm -hmm. are like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And we just talked about how we both got married when we were broke. Yeah. We both didn't have jobs, like choosing school. I wasn't really anything yet. And she supported me the whole way. Yeah. You know, eventually she, uh, you know, got her job as a yeah. teacher. Then she retired to go take care of her kids. And yeah. I'm like, the only reason I'm able to just like go out here and what I call just play and have fun, like business and content is fun to me. I just go yeah. out, I have fun with my friends yeah. and then it just so happens to make money. Yeah. But it's like, I'm only able to do that because she's able to be at home, 
do what needs to be done at home. And also she's willing to tolerate like my crazy uh, entrepreneur decisions, you yeah, know? For sure. For sure. I, I say that to Billy all the time. Like he'll be like, thank you, you know, for what you do for us. And I'm like, well, thank you because I'm out here in frigging Vegas right now doing a podcast interview. Yeah. Right. He's home with Madison and he empowers that creation in our relationship of like, he, he supports me being here right now, you know, and it's, right. it's, a, it's a great thing. And listen, I mean, like, I think over the decades, it's been, there's different dynamics, right? Because women came really aggressively into the workforce, what, in like the seventies, right? right? And then like the eighties, it grew and grew. And I think then like in the, in the nineties and early two thousands is when women really began to like get serious about careers outside the home. And now it's actually coming full circle that more dads, more men than ever are now becoming stay-at-home dads. Yeah. And it's like the whole circle is coming full circle. And I think that dynamic of like husband and wife working together in that way is incredible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, yeah. it's amazing yeah. just uh, hearing your story and, you know, the the lifestyle you're building and all the businesses you're helping. It's super Thanks. inspiring. Um, if somebody wants to link up with you, what's the best way to find you? Yeah, I would say listen to the Kelly Roach Show. It's 20-minute it. episodes. Just listen to it. It'll change your life. Kelly That's Rochelle. It. And you're 800 deep. 800 deep. I mean, you can go shopping. You can pick the episode that speaks to you. Yeah, you know? go listen yeah. to it. You know, one yeah. and a half speed. That's yeah, my favorite exactly. hack. Exactly, there you go. Watch a bunch yeah. of them. Well, that's cool. Well, um, we'll definitely link to your podcast down below. Uh, we'll link to your other socials below. And, yeah. you know, it's just been a, a blast talking to you and it's super Thanks. inspiring. Um, it just makes me want to level up and make sure that, man, man I, I always check myself. Am I being as efficient as I can be? Did I, you know, do I have the right idea? Because there's, it's always different when you get an outside perspective. Yeah. It was an awesome conversation. I love what you're doing. Studio is amazing. Energy here is awesome. You guys are high vibe. I yeah. really appreciate the opportunity to come on. Well, cool. Well, guys, if you like this podcast, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button. Uh, show Kelly some love in the comments and we'll catch you on the next one. Do you want to work 40 hours for 40 years to live on 40%? That sounds hard and sucks. If you do something from five to nine, a couple of days a week, you will have something in a decade. Real estate is the one thing that anyone can do. I don't care where you're from, yep. how smart you are, your height, your weight. 